Welcome to the Mindset Game Podcast. I am absolutely delighted to have a special guest with us today, Robert Diltz. Robert has a global reputation as a developer, author, coach, trainer, and consultant in the fields of neuro-linguistic programming, known as NLP, and success factoring, factor modeling, SFM, and is co-founder of NLP University in Santa Cruz, California, and DILT's Strategy Group. He is also co-founder with Dr. Stephen Gilligan of the International Association for Generative Change. Robert has authored or co-authored more than 30 books and 50 articles on a variety of topics related to personal and professional development, including From Coach to Awakener, NLP2, The Next Generation, Slide of Mouth, The Hero's Journey, and Voyage of Self-Discovery, and Beliefs, Pathways to Health and Well-Being. Robert's recent book series on success factor modeling identifies key characteristics and capabilities shared by successful entrepreneurs, teams, and ventures. And his recent book, The Power of Mindset Change with Mickey Fair, presents a powerful methodology for assessing and shaping key aspects of mindset to achieve greater performance and satisfaction. And we're going to get to learn more about that today. For the past 45 years, Robert has conducted trainings and workshops around the world for a range of organizations, institutes, and government bodies. Past clients and sponsors include Apple Inc., Microsoft, HP, IBM, the World Bank, Fiat, Ernst & Young, State Railway of Italy, and the list goes on and on. And Robert, as I mentioned to you before we started to record, it is such a true honor to have you on the show. Um, I have followed your work for years. Um, you are truly an expert in the arena of mindset, and uh, really, this is a dream come true. So thank you for taking the time to be here today. My pleasure. I'm really happy, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. I'm sure it will be very stimulating and inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> I am as well. So how about we kick things off with kind of the title of your last book, right? The Power of Mindset Change. I mean, this podcast is all about mindset. So what, yeah. what is the power of mindset change? And maybe even what is a mindset for those that are not quite sure? Yeah, thank you. I, I think that's a great question. Uh, it's, you know, kind of the very first thing that we address in the book is that, you know, so what is mindset? And we're, you know, we distinguish it from personality, uh, our personality can can uh, sort of, let's say, um, uh, emphasize or lead us to emphasizing certain mindsets. But mindset is changeable. Mindset is is usually context dependent. It's something that we can actually shift ourselves. Whereas our personality, you know, you you generally are believe you have the same personality your whole life. And even people with different personalities can take on the same mindset. And people with you know, uh, different mindsets uh, can have the same personality. So, um, so it's it's more of a the way that we set our filters. That's the way I like to think about it. So I, I usually would say that you know if you think about what creates a success, you know, a successful person is you have you know you have your personality. That's something you're born with. You can't change. You have your skill set, which is what you can develop and learn. That's about your capabilities. But then you have your mindset. And the mindset, like I said, is the way that you're sort of setting your filters. Where are you putting your attention? What are you prioritizing? And it's related not so much to what you're thinking, but how you're thinking about you know, what you're doing. And uh, in the book, we... Uh, are working with what we call three different levels of mindset, what we call the meta mindset, which would be your big picture clarity, your macro mindset, which is what would be your kind of ongoing habits of success, and then your micro mindset, which would be your your current priorities. So you because you have we have all of those are going to fit together. They're all going to be aligned in some ways. So um, yeah. And, and we would say then mindset is made up of things like, um, as I said, your priorities, but also your beliefs. You know, what is it that you are, what kind of, um, you know, stories are you holding? What kind of um, beliefs are you acting from? 
So, um, yeah, so I think I would say it's the, the simplest way, you know, to express it for me is it's how I am setting my inner filters to engage the world. And that's, that's, you know, will determine what I'm, what I'm perceiving, where I'm putting my efforts and, you know, uh, uh, and how much effort I'm putting into different things. Thank you. And it, I think it's amazing that you have kind of broken it up into kind of like the big level, the, the macro and the micro, Mm -hmm. um, because I think that there are different things. And I think it is important for people to be mindful of those filters, right. That then shape how they see the world. And of course, how they feel, how they behave and and their results. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about the kind of differentiation between those three levels, if you don't mind. Sure. Sure. So, you know, as we say, the, the, the meta mindset is what we call the big picture clarity. And that has to do with, you know, um, we say there, there's sort of six basic areas there. There is my, my passion. So what am I passionate about? Do I know what I'm passionate about? Am I engaging what I'm passionate about? And, and in fact, am I bringing my passion into what I'm doing? One key thing we say is about, about this idea of passion as a mindset is that I'm not waiting around for something to make me passionate. It's, it's, and it's not like, okay, if I'm passionate about riding horses, then I can't be passionate except when I'm riding a horse. We would say, no, no. What is it about riding a horse that makes you passionate? What is it that you love about that? Maybe it's this feeling of somehow, you know, being connected with this, you know, something bigger than myself that I'm, you know, uh, coordinating with. Oh, so that's your passion is connecting and coordinating with something. Then once you know that, you can bring that, you can start to bring that into many of the things that you're doing. So like, you know, my passions are things like connecting. I love to connect things. Well, I can do that in all kinds of places. I don't have to wait until something makes me passionate. So when we say, you know, like passion as a mindset, it it means that you are in charge and you can actually go, all right, if I, if let's say I'm doing taxes, that's not something that is not, I don't know. Well, maybe there's a few people that are naturally passionate about that, but Okay, can is there any way I can bring some passion to that? And, and so that's one of them. They said one of these six. The other, another would be, we call a sense of vision. Um, you know, so so vision as a mindset is it's it's not a thing, right? It's not just having a vision. It's vision of a mindset of looking to the future. And we say there's sort of two dimensions to that. One is looking for the destination you know where am i trying to get to but another is the direction am i going in the right direction and sometimes you can't know the destination you know in times of uncertainty it's very difficult to know as we've had experience in the past couple of years so then i need something more like an an inner compass you know so do i but i but i have to apply that compass you know i mean again it's it's not just something that i have to wait for i need to apply that so uh, uh, another uh, dimension of the meta mindset is what we would call the sense of of mission. A mission is different than my vision. So my vision is where I'm trying to get to, but my mission is about what I'm doing. So we say mission is sort of putting your passion into action. Uh, you know, given my, we would say, given my excellences, given my, sometimes we use the metaphor of superpower. You know, the idea of my superpower is it's the thing that I can do that's natural to me that I don't even, usually I don't even, I, I don't think is anything special because it's just what I do, you know. Uh, and and a lot of times people don't even know their own superpower. Mm-hmm. So mission is, okay, am I, am I in what I'm doing really, you know, putting into action what I am most passionate about and best at. And this is actually one of the things that this mindset map is designed to do, because what we find is that a lot of people get caught in their competence. And it's great to be competent, but you know, if you're not passionate about it and it's not connected to your vision, then you're basically you know stuck. 
So we distinguish between what we call competence, excellence, and genius. And so, you know, competence is, you know, I'm good at it. I spend time doing it. It's, you know, in my skill set. Right. But excellence is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love it. I'm good at it and I'm doing it. And, you know, so, and it's, and then to, to move to genius, then it's aligned with my vision, you know? So my first corporate client, you, as you were saying, uh, you were reading off the list was Apple and, you know, while I did not, um, like many people, I didn't particularly like Steve Jobs. His personality was not particularly likable, but he did have an exceptional mindset. I mean, in, in fact, you could say, it's, you know, his mindset is what allowed him to be successful in spite of his personality. <laughs> you know, the, it wasn't successful because of his personality. It was in spite of that, but was because of this mindset and, you know, pretty much everybody would say whether they liked him or not, the guy was a genius. So why, why do we say he's a genius? Is because he was able to bring this excellence in service of, of a really big vision. Mm -hmm. So we got, so we have passion, vision, mission. Then we would say another part of this meta mindset is your ambition. And an ambition means that I'm, it's not about, it's not my passion, it's different than my passion, it's different than my mission. My mission is I'm, it's what I do, but ambition is what I'm committed to achieve. Mm -hmm. Because doing and achieving are not the same thing. You know, I can, if I decide I want to, you know, double my, you know, uh, double my number of clients in two years, that's an ambition. I mean, that's not my mission. My mission is why I want to double it, because, because my mission would be, I want to bring, you know, em, you know, uh, empowerment to these people. I want to bring greater awareness to people. That's the mission. But the ambition is, you know, you know, when, how many, you know, uh, who, etc. So it's all about achievement. And and again, it's an it's a mindset. I'm like, you know, when we, you talk about the thirty books. People ask me, oh, you know, you're traveling around the world, you're doing all these things. How do you find time to write a book? And I say, well, you don't find time. <laughs> I would never find time. You know, <laughs> you make time. You know, it, it's something you, and that's what I mean by ambition. You've got to make the time. So it's about committing to a, a, a goal, not just an action, but a result. And then finally, we would say a, a last area of this mindset, meta mindset, would be a sense of role. And again, role is different than ambition. That's what I'm achieving. So we usually like to say passion is what I feel, right? It's an energy. I feel it when I look to the future from my passion. That's when I see the vision. That's when I see what is possible. Then mission is about doing okay what am i going to do now with that passion and that vision what am i going to actually you know start to do and then ambition is achieve what am i going to achieve with what i'm doing and then role is is you know who who am i how do i fit in with every you know that with others around me in, in my market with my you know with other people uh, with my uh, allies or my uh, partners with my competitors who am I? And that's where you kind of get that intersection of skill set, mindset, personality. And when you can align those, then, you know, you are, you know, you're flying, you're ready to go. And so what, you know, one of the things we would say is that um, a lot of times, first of all, people, they think, you know, vision, mission, you know, it's all a bunch of words. I don't know what the difference is. And yet they're, absolutely crucial you know they're not the same thing and they're not just abstractions they are th things that will determine you know if you write 30 books or not if you achieve you know your your um if you grow your company as a as an entrepreneur so that's why we wanted to create this what we call the mindset map uh which is what this uh, power of mindset book explains and then how can you visualize that in a sense? And, and then, then the question is, given a particular goal that I have, especially for my business, um, 
what is the combination of these, you know, for example, obviously, if I'm trying to reach profitability, ambition is going to be really important. But let's say I'm, I'm trying to innovate, well, maybe their ambition is going to get in the way. And so what I need to be focusing on there is something more about what, what is the, you know, what is my passion? What is the, what is the vision? So what we're doing is showing and we add in, we can, and I can go into that more later about the macro and micro mindsets, because for instance, to achieve that goal, I've got to adjust my mindset in, in order to be able to, again, get those filters directed to where they need to be. And then what we do with the, with the tool is there's, or with the, the inventory is there's actually 49 different tools that are suggested if you need to shift your mindset. So what what do I do to you know to bring that focus? So anyway, that's a that's an example of mindset and what we might mean by that. Well, I'm so grateful that you took us through the detail of that because yeah. you know first of all, there's that whole shift in how we think about mindset, right? Yeah. In the sense that it's not just a a thing that we embrace, it's how we utilize that, right? So passion as a mindset, right? So kind of content aside, passion as a mindset, vision, mission, ambition, role, and so on. Um, And and the whole kind of inside out perspective. So it starts with the passion, which is a feeling. How do I want to feel, as you said? And then it goes to doing and achieving and so on and fitting in, you know, with others. And so in, in that sense, we can't go wrong. Because right. we're starting from what is the essence of who we we wish to be in the sense of how we want to feel. Yes. Because everything that we do is about a feeling anyway. So we yeah. just can't go wrong because we're it's all aligned with how we want to feel with the vibration. Well, yeah, you know, the, it, this is, the, I think right there, you put your finger on a really important thing because, you know, remember when I talked about people getting trapped in their competencies, that's where, you know, somebody goes to work and they go numb. You know, so it was basically, I'm just doing it as a job. I don't have a feeling for it. I I remember actually doing a program for a a, a big group of people here in Paris. And we were talking about, you know, feeling and emotion. And this person raises their hand. They said, well, my business school teacher says, you know, emotion and feeling have nothing to do with business. (laughs) Well, that's why probably why he's a professor and not a manager, because, you know, yeah, you can say that. But if you, you know, it, of course, it has everything to do with that. You know, what my, one of my favorite quotes about that is from Warren Buffett, you know, who's, who's you know, r- routinely in the top, you know, five wealthiest people on the planet. And he's wealthy because he invests in other people. You know? And he says, he says, without passion, if you don't have passion, you don't have energy, no, no passion, no energy. And if you don't have energy, you have nothing. <laughs> so no passion, no energy, no energy, nothing. And uh, what was it? Steve Jobs said, you know, he, he said, you know, you have to have passion. The reason is because it's hard and it's so hard that if you don't, you'll give up when it, you know, you're going to give up. So you've got to have that passion. That's the essence of it. And yet when you think about how many people don't go to work, with passion they're not living their passion they do that maybe on the weekend you know or something but and and yet i think it's absolutely clear as you point out that when you when you're living from there that's when you're going to be living certainly your best life and you're going to be you know uh, in in what we would say is, is the best version of yourself yeah and, and how much you achieve is less relevant in yeah. the sense that you're still feeling the way that you want to feel, which is probably yeah. going to allow you to achieve even more. And I love that there's the visualizing component of that as yes. well, because it's the imagination that brings all of that, you know, out into the world as an expression. And then, of course, into physical manifestation yes. um, yeah. and and the the concept of you know, service of others, as yes. said, Warren Buffett, right? Investing in others. Like, Cause I think that when there is that altruistic component to it, it's superpowers, yes. um, everything that we want to do when it's genuine. Right. One, 100%. And, I, that, and in fact that you, that's, a, that's, it's interesting. I've almost said that same kind of thing, word for word, that when you have a, a, a mission of service beyond yourself, 
you you know you will you will have superpowers you know you you think about people we call heroes you know they're do you know they do something that saves somebody and you go wow that was so brave and they go look i didn't even think about it you know mm -hmm. you know if it was for me i wouldn't have done it and this is the other thing that i find it's like um but one of my one of my favorite examples of this is you know the the miracle on the hudson you know chesley sullenberger who was you know landed this plane um you know saved 200 lives and you know and you know did something extraordinary um you know landing a plane with no engines on the hudson river everybody survives and afterwards they asked him you know gosh you seem so calm weren't you afraid and his answer, I thought, was interesting. He said, are you crazy? I've never been more afraid in my life, <laughs> you know, but I've never been more calm in my life. And they were asking, well, how did you stay so calm? And one of his answers was, he said, well, first of all, I was afraid for me, but I was the captain, you know, I'm, I'm the pilot. You know, I, I was calm for those 200 other people, you know, so that it's like you you're given this gift it's a gift to be in service because suddenly you will put in more more effort it's because it's not just about you I, you know many of the things that i've done i would have given up on long ago if it was just for me <laughs> if it was just for money you know like who you know who wants to risk their life for money you know and if you if you lose your life you can't spend it you know but people will risk their lives for you know for for again you know service to others there's maybe even a last little bit on that one of my there's a very interesting research that was done with with rats believe it or not where they have a rat on one side of a cage and they have a little like a a metal bar in between and then the, on the other side of the cage and what they do is they put an electrical current on this bar so that you know, if the rat tries to go from one side of the cage to the other, it'll get zapped with this electricity. And then what they do is they start putting stuff on the other side of the cage. So they put food on the other side of the cage. Actually, the first thing they do is they'll, they, uh, you know, rats are very curious. So they'll put some new object and usually the rat will go over and explore it. But if they put a little bit of electricity on that bar, it doesn't go across. And so then they put the food on there, put food on the other side. Well, it gets a little bit zapped, but it'll go across for the food, right? So it'll go and it'll go get the food. Then they turn up the electricity and they turn it up high enough that, it, you know, it won't go for the food. Um, and and so in, in other words, interestingly, the, the rat would starve to death rather than go across that bar. But if it's a mother rat and you put her baby on the other side, she will go instantly and no matter how high they turn it up she she never stops going so you get the sense all right even we you know we are mammals and even a mammal like like a rat has that sense of if it's for something beyond me then you you have this greater motivation and i think this is this is something that's really you know, really important. And especially when we think about people who succeed in their, in their businesses, they're doing it because they want to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, thank you. That, that example touched my heart because, yeah. you know, I, I do believe that when there's a big enough why, and I, and I don't remember if it was Dr. Frankel that said this or um, yeah. the quote, but when there's a big enough why, then the how is less relevant, right? The yeah. exact, you know, vision, mission, ability, like all of that yeah. is important, but but it's the why. And yeah. so there are a couple of things that are flowing through my mind that yeah. I imagine are flowing through the minds of the listeners. Sure. Number one is what if I don't know my why? And number yeah. two is what are those 49 tools? Can you give us at least one really good one that I can do to sure. shift my mindset? <laughs> So which sure. one of those would you like to start with? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, um, so first of all, uh, you know, we were talking about passion. And so one of the tools is about finding passion and, and about not only finding it, but expressing, expressing it. So one of the things that we, we do is um, 
engage multiple intelligences. What I mean by multiple intelligences is that clearly, if you're looking for passion and you're looking for it in words, it, you're probably not going to find it because it's not words, right? We use words to express it, but passion itself is, is not in the head. It's not in the words, right? It's in the body. So one of our tools is, you know, about how do you, and how do you find your passion? And you, again, there's, it's a series of questions, which would be things like, what have you always loved to do, especially since, especially as a child, you know, what, 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 what would you, what have you loved to do all your life? What do you do as your hobby? You know, what would you spend time doing that's, you know, unpaid? And it's not, and then the question is, it's not about the thing. It's about, it's about why, you know? So somebody might go, well, I love spending my time riding my bicycle. Why do you like riding your bicycle? That's the why. Riding the bicycle isn't the why. It's the thing that is the expression of this why. And usually people have a difficult time finding their passion because they're looking outside of themselves. <laughs> I got to look at this thing. This Is it sewing? Is it cooking? Is it this, this, this? Well, those are simply mirrors back to you of what your actual passion is, which is, is the thing that's inside of you. So, and, and then, you know, my metaphor of, a, of passion is that it's like the flame of a candle. Uh, the, the flame, it's, it's a flame in and of itself. Does it, it, you can use the flame to heat something. You can use the flame of the candle to see something. That's where vision comes from. I can't really have a good vision until I know my passion. I can intellectually look into the future, but it's not going to be a vision. So some of our other questions would be, you know, uh, think about if you're on a professional level. I mean, they all relate. Because for me, passion is neither professional or not professional. It's it all relates. But it would be something like, um, you know, think about the the best day that you've had in your job and what you're doing in the past year. You know, what 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 was that, and why was that a good day? So it's kind of capturing these different parts of a mosaic that, and then using them as a mirror, and that's the important part. Because if I just look out at it, I'm not going to find my passion. I've got to go. I've got to keep using that question. Why? Why was that good? Why did I love that? Why has this always been something that uh, is important to me? And, and then what we'll have people do is to express that not in terms of the outer object, you know, like whatever cooking or something else, but in terms of what that, you know, what that why is. So, and, and a lot of times that's, that's not so easy to express. Sometimes you can find words for it, like mine, for example, my, we, and we usually say, in, as this tool, I usually like to try to find five, five words. And the five words are, like I say, it's a bit like a mosaic. So my five are connection, awakening, so I like connecting things. And then awakening means I, I connect things, not just to connect them, but there's awakening means you suddenly see more than you did before. You're aware of being part of something bigger. You know, this idea of, of in my book, Coach to Awakener, the idea of an awakener is I'm suddenly able to see where I fit into something bigger than me. And then creativity is another one of my passions. And, and it's not only writing books. I I, I you know, create music, I draw pictures, I make, you know, seminars. I mean, I like to create things. Uh, my, my fourth word is inspiration. So I also like to, sorry, my fourth word is contribution. I like to contribute to the creation and then in, inspire so that other people do that. Now, those are the words, but what then we would say is find your gesture for those. And so, you know, if, if, if you take a word like, like in, inspiration, what's, show me inspiration with your body. You know, don't just say it. What does that look like? Oh, if it's, if it's awakening, well, what does awakening look like? Show me, you know, sh sh make the movement. Because if I just go, oh, I'm really passionate about creativity. Well, that doesn't mean anything. And then we also want to engage 
the, the others like w- w- i would say what's your picture when you when you feel that and so it's not your this is not about your vision of the future but it's what's your picture of that passion how do you how do you see it like for me my image of my passion is like a a multicolored um it's like a rainbow fountain that comes through me goes out and then comes back to me sort of through the ground so it's like this image and that that image when i have it it connects me right to my passion um so so these would be the kinds of things that we would do in that tool is, is not just answer the question, but really go deeper into that and then express that in some way other than just words. So, so again, for those who are listening, those might be some of the things that you would do. And, I, and I'm curious, actually curious, uh, Barrett, as you were listening, did you, w- did you find anything for you that would seem to be resonant with your passion if you were going to say a couple of the words what are, what are they for you i i always like to meet people up we, 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 do, we do this on our programs meet people passion first you know, don't go now tell me about what you do where you're from that it's like what's your passion when you share your passion first it's like mm-hmm. so it's like what is your soul passion? to soul conversation not a head-to-head <laughs> conversation so first of all thank you for asking before i answer i want to just acknowledge mm-hmm the creativity, the contribution, the inspiration, right? You've certainly helped awaken me. Mm. One of my deep passions is mindset, you know, yes. just always called me, um, mm. you know, the power of mindset yeah. and you created sleight of mouth and other things that have mm. transformed my work. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Oh, thank um, you. In terms of, as you were describing the words, a few words came up for me. One of the biggest ones was freedom. Yes, yes. And, and not in the, what some people might consider freedom as in, you know, I can do whatever I want, whenever I want right. that kind of thing, but more like mental, emotional freedom. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, just freedom of any parts of us that are yeah. stuck in some way. Yeah. Um, just allowing them to go play, which is what yeah. we call it, the mindset game. So, so I'm curious because what you're saying is it's so relevant because yeah, trying to explain it is is challenging. But if you were going to show it, if you say, "Well, show me what freedom means to you with your body," how would you how would you show it? I would do this. Yeah, <laughs> Great. and there's an image associated with that. Yes, yeah. What's that image? So I've not shared this. Uh, but I'll share it. Um, uh, it's an image of like an arena, almost like uh-huh. a you know, beautiful arena yeah. and sitting in the seats in yes. the arena are all of the uh, sweet little parts of people that hold yeah. that are, have been um, stuck, if you will, yeah. with certain extreme beliefs or emotions or yes. situations. And that in doing this mindset work, they are free. And yeah. so we're all, <laughs> celebrating that together um yeah. yeah so in a nutshell that's what it is there's more to it but as you were describing kind of the image yeah. I, that came to yeah. mind i mean yeah. there's energy flowing throughout my yeah i was gonna say it's beautiful it gives <laughs> it gives me so shivers <laughs> you see that image it's beautiful a lot of resonance so and i think that's one of the interesting things too about you know about mindset and especially things like like passion is is you find resonance and and when you really are in touch with your passion, it's not just stuck inside of you. It's not just yours. It, it's like like what I mean about like the candle. It it's a flame that lights other flames, you know. And the great thing about the other thing I love about that candle metaphor, and I think it was something that Buddha Buddha the Buddha said, you know, that a single candle can light a thousand other candles without losing anything of its own flame you know so you don't you don't lose anything by lighting another candle right you're just making more light you know it's like there's there's no reason not to and i think that's that what i mean by that notion of passion and and i think that freedom sounds sounds wonderful and and something else that buddha said um and it might not be the exact words but in essence mm-hmm. is that suffering in our life is caused by the attachment to things yes. so yes. If we free ourselves from those attachments we can be more of that candle because there's more yes. energy to radiate out more love yeah. uh, you know that uh can help light other people 
um, you know, kind of like a lighthouse, right? The, the metaphor right. of a lighthouse when there's a storm, um, you know, to be that lighthouse, not only for our yeah. inner parts, but also yeah. for the people in our companies and our families and our communities right. and our planet. Um, yeah. Because it, you know, we need, we need more of those candles. And for that, yeah. more of us need to be free of all of our shoulds, right? What should be my vision, right. my mission, my ambition, right? right. My role versus what is the truest, most authentic, right. you know, passion. Um, yeah. And the simple questions that you've invited us to consider and the fact that it is a mindset, Yes, um, it's a way of being, of living. It's not a thing, um, right? It's a way of feeling. It's yeah, you know. That's why you know it's, that we always enter in all of the mindsets. You enter through questions mm -hmm. because it because it, the answers might change. I mean, and that's because, like I said, it's a filter. So that's why you know the the passion question is you know what am what it's not just what am i passionate about it's what brings me you know joy what brings me energy what is it and it, and that might even shift or, and and it can also be how can i bring you know energy to what i'm doing right now and then the same with vision it's it's you know what is it that i most would would most love to see in the future um so so that all it all comes down to questions that we continue asking and the answers will evolve as we evolve as too you know uh, like the mission question you know what is my contribution to this you know what what can i bring to this what can i do now so um I, I, yeah I, I think that the the mindset is tends to be you know I would say, you know, at least creatively driven by questions. And then, of course, that basic idea that energy follows attention, energy flows where attention goes. So my mindset is going to determine in any particular situation, where is my attention going in that moment? And then that's where my energy is going to be, you know, uh, directed to. So I think that and I agree with you 100%. It's all about how we consciously direct our energy. Um, and so I'm curious for the last few minutes here, if you don't yeah. mind, yeah. what about if some people right now are not yet feeling free to pursue yeah. that which they sense is their yes. passion? Uh, maybe yeah. they've got some self-limiting beliefs, like yeah, I can't sure. do this, or I'm not good enough, or worthy, or it's not sure. it's going to harm other people. What do they do to shift those limiting beliefs? So that's, of course, a fantastic question, and that's one of the that's of course one of the tools. You know, uh, in when we're doing some of our mindset assessments on the uh, on the inventory, there's there's sort of three questions or three statements. You know, I I like it. I'm good at it. I spend time doing it. And, and so if I'm, if I don't like it, what's in the way of, you know, why, if, if I'm, if I'm not good at it, what's stopping me from being good at it? If I'm not spending time doing it, even if I like it and I'm good at it, what's, what's there. So there is where we start looking for the obstacles. So you, yes, you have the questions and then you have the, the barriers or what we would call a belief barrier. And what you want to do there is, is we'll, you know, begin to work with what we call making a belief bridge. And the belief bridge is what gets me around the barrier. It, so rather than try to fight the barrier, attack the barrier, get rid of the barrier, analyze the barrier, first thing what we do is, is we mindfully acknowledge the barrier without judgment. So what that means is I go, it's there, okay? I have, so I, so usually, by the way, it, it, it doesn't start as a nice, well-formed belief. It starts off in the form of some kind of contraction in the body, uh, some kind of tension, some kind of, you know, rigidity, what we call crash. Crash, has, it's an acronym for contracted, reactive, caught in analysis paralysis, separated, and hostile, you know. But any one of those things could be it come the barrier. Now, what you want to do is, is to hold that. This is where 
this is where I think mindfulness comes into mindset. I want to be able to be aware of that without my energy going to it. So remember, we said energy follows attention. So if I'm putting all my attention on that, it's just going to get worse. So I've got to be able to, this is where this, this ability to, there's an acronym we use, we call coach states, <laughs> you know, centered, open, alert, and attentive, connected to, you know, um, my head, my heart, my belly, my body. And then the H is holding what's there from a place of, you know, uh, curiosity, uh, uh, creativity, resourcefulness. So I've got to be able to meet the barrier and then we say hold it in this, from a place of bigger awareness. Then I can actually become curious about it. And there's a, a whole, in one of the tools, I mean, there's, this, there's literally the, the um, there's a physical thing that you do, which is we would say, slow down. If you meet the barrier, slow down, pause, breathe, center. Then become curious about the barrier. And we say there's then what you there's this sort of these statements, you know, that's interesting. Not that's a problem, not that's that's interesting. I have this barrier. I'm sure it makes sense. You know, something is needing to be heard or to be held or to be healed. And so paradoxically, we say, welcome, welcome to this barrier. Then the next step is I become really curious. What is so? What is the why of the barrier? <laughs> what is it trying to do for me? Well, usually, you know, it's trying to protect me from harm. You know, it's to keep me from being blamed or frustrated, or that, which is interesting because we say that's all away from. It's what I. It's what I don't want, not what I do want. So we go, okay, you you you're you're doing this because. You're trying to protect yourself. But what do you want? Well, I want to feel safe. Oh, oh, that's what we call the positive intention. You want to feel safe. Now what's interesting is we can begin to bring our attention back to these other areas, mission, vision. Uh, I mean, of course, if you have those, now sometimes the barrier comes before you get those. But in that case, you, what you're still wanting to do is to say, so what is it that I do want to go towards? And what resources are there to support me to do that? So now, and the, the last part, because I know our time is getting short, is what we would do then is to create the bridges, you kind of jump into the future, say, and, and you play, uh, when you talk about, you know, um, uh, uh, mindset games, you play a game. If I could transform this barrier, if I had been able to get beyond this barrier and, and was really living who I am destined to be, who I am, how have I, what's the belief that got me across it? You know, what, so I'm kind of looking back from the future and, and we will, use, this, is a, this is a quick explanation, but usually we kind of guide people using a timeline. So I'm literally projecting myself in the future beyond it, looking back and going, well, so what did I do? How did I get across this? And usually that's going to be something that relates to these issues we were talking about, that it's, that it's not just, uh, well, I just decided that I could. It's about something deeper in me woke up, right? Something awakened. And this is actually another thing we say about these barriers. Something wants to wake up. <laughs> you know, something really wants to wake up. So what is it that, that needs to awaken? And, and, so that would be an, an example of a kind of a tool, what we call it, building a belief ridge. So I hope that's that's been a, a lot to say, but it's a... It, it's very helpful because it invites us to consider that when these barriers show up, first of all, we need to notice them, right? Physiologically. Exactly. To, to embody them, to fully accept them. Yes. Um, and feel them. And so... When we do that, then we can hear their message. Yes. Like, what What is the barrier? And and it's what is the away from? Like, what are you scared might happen if I do this? Right. Like, it's that kind of really listening to what that is, um, and being very curious and compassionate and not judgmental, right. uh, but just you know observing with curiosity. And I think when we do that, then it allows those barriers to give us the gifts. Yes. Uh, 
which is what is it that we need to shift, right? That yeah. the mindset change, what is it that needs to happen? And I love the idea of the uh, kind of future self, if you will, like, yeah. what would I need to believe? It's almost like modeling our own future exactly. self. Exactly. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> because it's the best answers, right? It's our own future self versus it's, the it's, consultant or, you know, it's precisely. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> if, and if somebody has a difficulty there, I'll say, you know, think of who believes in you, you know, what would that person say, you know, and they, even if it's your, if it's your pet, you know, if your pet had a voice, <laughs> what would your pet say? You know I mean? You can, you can always, the, the, you can always find that way where they we, because the fact is we are surrounded with resources and a lot of times it's our mindset that filters it out that's the that's the thing you know not only does our mindset filter things in it filters things out and so this is where we can also realize we there's so many resources around us if we know how to ask if we know how to look um and and that's i found that's always been true for me <laughs> yeah thank you and i do believe that our unconscious mind will allow us to access those resources when it knows that we will be safe yes and we're safe meaning that we got the learnings right we got what we yes. need to get and until yes. we fully acknowledge and i'm going to say the word love yes love and accept those barriers yeah. or those limiting mindsets we won't be able to understand what those attachments are that we are now ready to let go of because i do yeah. believe as you said, that there is a readiness, there's an awakening. We are, yeah. you know, whoever is listening to you today is listening for a reason. There's a part of them that's ready to be awakened, ready to be uh, let go, to be freed, so to speak, so that they can embody their full passion, mission, you know, vision, ambition, role in the world, and so on, and be that candle. And so thank you, Robert. How can people learn more about you, your amazing programs, mm -hmm. your books, well, thank you. Yeah, so so you, you were mentioning before um, uh, NLP University. So it's uh, www.nlpu.com. So simple. DILT Strategy Group is www.diltstrategygroup.com. Uh, and there's all, also just robertdilts.com. So there, those are probably the, the best ways to find out. Um, and those have list of the programs and schedules and things that I'm I'm doing from in these different areas. Well, thank you once again, Robert, from my whole heart on behalf of everyone who's listening or watching us today yeah. uh, for your contributions, for the inspirations. Um, I believe that you are awakening many souls to what's highest mm. and best for them and obviously yeah. for our entire world. So thank you. You're welcome. And it's great to see the flame of your candle i know that we're both candle candle holders and candle lighters so, so let's let's bring more more light so thank you thank you very thank you robert okay.